Hello, welcome to podcast number nine. Whoa, we're at number nine? Yeah, we're at number nine. <laughs> wow. Can you believe it? I'm James. We were at eight yesterday. My name's Skylar. Um, also known as um, it's got the magic guy on YouTube. Don't look it up. Okay, <laughs> you got it, Chief. Uh, okay, so we're uh, we're what? That's the first time I heard you say Chief, and I think you're doing it to fuck with me. Huh? I said that's the first time I heard you say Chief, and I think you're doing it to fuck with me. For sure, because of today's today's topic. No, uh, we've got uh, an hour and twenty something minutes to wrap this shit up. So we're oh, getting damn. right into it, yeah. Um, we've got a few things well, we're going to talk mean. about today. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Robot's on, which is, <laughs> it's going to be on every time we do our podcast now. Well, for the next couple weeks. Yeah. Then, and it'll, then it'll be over. Yeah. But. Uh, tight, tight schedule. Yeah. So we're going to crash through everything, but that's okay. I didn't get to write anything down for this podcast. Yeah. Um, because of so how little time good. we have. So I'm going to say we're recording this on um, Sunday, December 8th, 2019. Because I usually like to keep track of dates. There it is. There you go. Um, right in the front, I guess. Yeah, I said it in the video. Ugh. Um, and These things are so much easier to record. I don't want the fucking... I know. <laughs> we just we just did... Uh, it's fucking effort. We just did the Sly session that's going up around Christmas on the game shed. And that you didn't think was as good. No, because I, I was in podcast mode. Like, I wanted to talk, but I didn't want to, like, listen to Bentley, and I didn't want to... See, wanna... I was talking enough, but it wasn't as funny, but, you know, whatever. I didn't want to try and be funny. I just wanted to talk to you about uh, what we did this week. We did some recommendations. Yeah, the, we, we, we completed each other's recommendations we did. as much. And, um, and we're also... Uh, we're we're going to spend, like, you know, 20 or so minutes, as much as we can, on each of those. Yeah. Um. Uh. As much as we have to say, and then we're going to cover... We didn't get to write shit down, but we're going to try and cover our favorite things of 2019. Oh, we're doing that this one? We are. We are. Fuck. So just, uh, we sh- I should have wrote shit down. I thought we were going to do something no, different. No, it's, it's cool. Just keep it subconscious. Well, I, I had... No a, matter what you thought we were doing, you weren't prepared for it, because we didn't discuss well, shit. Well, no, I had, <laughs> I, I had a nomination, but I thought we were just going to talk about our thoughts on each other's recommendation. No. But I had no. a nomination um, that was piggybacking off of, I guess, the last top, the last podcast, but it would have been a lot better, I think. Okay. But so I guess I'll, we'll do that next time. Uh, not next time. I've got something for next time. Okay. We'll do it the time after. Time after. I mean, um, we, can, we can go over that nomination. Um, yeah. Not, and, and, and not two hours. It, it'll be a quick one, I guess. So we're going to cover... Uh, we're gonna cover just our favorite things of 2019. Like, is we're not, we're not just off the top of our head. We're not, yeah, we're not gonna be like top ten games, top ten music albums, <laughs> top ten tier fucking, lists. Yeah, we're not gonna do anything crazy like that. We're we're just gonna ramble, I guess. We might do that next week with next week's topic, but with this week, uh, we're we're yeah, we're just gonna. Whole oh, of 2019. Okay, we're just gonna I all, I already thought of something else. All we're right. just gonna name our favorite things of the year at the end, and I think okay, that should there's, be there's gonna be some crossover between us. That should be fairly quick. At all least right. when it comes to like movies and yeah, shit. That, that's that, that's no problem. That'll, that'll be quick. All right. Yeah. Okay. This is fair. Um. So, so without further ado, um, let's start with yours. Oh, uh, I thought we were gonna flip a coin or something to see who starts with whose. No. But let's, fuck it. All right. Let's um, do it. Uh, you recommended Skyrim. Oh, I thought. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're confusing me so far. No, we're doing the Rex thought, first. Yeah. Okay. So you're starting with my recommendation, not yeah. my experience with your recommendation. Okay. <laughs> yes. So we're starting off with your experience here. Yeah. So I recommended to you that you play about roughly at least ten hours of Skyrim. And I didn't do that. Not 10 hours, but you played enough, I guess. Yeah, I played a few hours of Skyrim. Um, and I had to play it in VR, uh, which is the way that I'd played it before. <laughs> because it was $40 everywhere still. Some Yeah, some it's reason. fucking $40. On Black Friday, it was $17. But like, I was just like, oh, it's probably usually like 20 no, <laughs> like, I thought it was like five bucks on Steam or something. I thought it was like a five dollar game now that you could just find used, but no. So that's something. Um, 
I had I spent like the first half of the week trying to track it down in a better way to play it, but eventually I just played it in VR. Um, so I played it like less than I should have, and I played it um, in smaller chunks of time, probably mm-hmm. than I should have. But um, I picked up from where I left off before, um, which doesn't mean anything to anyone. Who he was? Uh, last time I remember, you were in just in White Run. Okay, I was in an area where there's a bunch of fucking snowy mountains everywhere. Um, that that's not White Run, but uh, was, you're probably just in some random ass mountain area. Yeah, there were like some some little uh, or maybe in a uh, oh fuck, is it called um Solitude? Were you in Solitude? I really don't know. There were some areas where, um, you know. There were some towers and, like, uh, castles and shit. And uh, I didn't do anything serious. <laughs> surprise, well, surprise. Uh, I <laughs> I just ran around fucking, fucking with people and uh, killing people. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's pretty fun to shoot a chicken with a bow and arrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, yep. <laughs> oh, I can immediately agree. I like, personally, I like smacking them with swords. Okay. Because they just fucking just disappear. Yeah, I like <laughs> I like watching them tumble away like like a tumbleweed. Yeah, well, I mean, the ragdolls in that game are hilarious. Like, when you die. Yeah, but I didn't see myself. Oh, right. Oh, you're in, um... Well, like, even when you're in first person, at least I'm, like, not in VR. When you die, it just shows your body, like, just fly away, depending. What I like to do is kill pretty much anyone i come in contact with especially uh Just like, <laughs> fuck you or be a dick to them the yeah uh like the courier came up to me <laughs> gave me like i don't know what he gave me because it just said oh i found you you need this and then it said items added but i didn't see what i got okay i don't know um that's probably my fault it probably might have, it might have been gold probably said it somewhere but, like, the first thing I did after that was just draw my bow and shoot him right through the fucking skull. <laughs> and he just, like, got down on his knee and was like, oh, I knew I shouldn't have come out here or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that probably sounds so basic if you play Skyrim. It's like, yeah, dead meme. But, like, I don't know. No, no. It's like. I think it's pretty great. I mean, everyone's experience with the game is different. Or, like, you'll do re- different shit. Which is kind of why I recommend it to you to see like what you would do, pretty much. And just when I watched you play, it was thoroughly entertaining. I <laughs> and like honestly, like one of the biggest memes is like when you keep doing that to like other guards or whatever. So like you kind of got like a hidden status on you. If you go back to White Run or like guards or some shit, they'll just pull their swords and be like, "You should have never came here." And that, like, every guard says that in the whole game, yeah. no matter where you are. You should never come here. Like, it's, it's like, those are fighting <laughs> words. <laughs> you should not exist in Skyrim. Um, yeah. Like, you'll just be walking down the road, and then there just happens to be a guard. You just, shing, you should never came here. <laughs> if someone really pisses you off, then you just kill them and take their clothes, and then... Oh, yeah, taking their clothes is, like, the best thing to do. And then just drop them there as a power move. Yeah, like I don't exactly. need these as you don't need them. Just either. like I'm humiliating you, kind of. <laughs> yeah, just like this is what you get, asshole. Yeah, fuck you. Um, I definitely did that all the time. I got the shit scared out of me by a, a wolf once or twice. Oh, they disappear. Um, well, because I'm in VR. Um, yeah. So like, there'd be one behind me. Like, so I just I didn't know it was there, but like I was getting like my health was going down. So I turned around and I was like, like fucking wolf in my face. <laughs> See, for, for me, I just hear the music and I was first. Like, oh. For me, it's like when you first start, I hear the music. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. The enemy is now. I'm like, god damn, where's the fucking wolf? And then they just like, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> They're extremely easy to fight. Yeah. Um, I encountered a mammoth a couple times. Oh, those suck to kill, so got, don't even bother. I got killed by one, but then I killed I killed one after, uh, after a few, few attempts. They have and so then it wasn't health, worth it. Ridiculous. They didn't drop anything I wanted. They never do. They like the best thing they drop is like their tusks when you can just sell them. <laughs> that was um, real. I there was wasn't real. a giant nearby them. I did see one giant. Normally, when there's mammoths, like there's a giant and it's his mammoth. So if you hit the mammoth, you piss them both off. And the giants can be pretty tough, honestly. 
I don't know. I just ended up getting killed a lot. Eventually, <laughs> I found a new town and uh, I took... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I get into that, um, one of the mammoths I encountered was doing something a little funny and I took a video so I could show you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, what he was doing. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's fallen into a waterfall repeatedly. You know, it's like going up and down. It's like he's bouncing like <laughs> really fast. He's glitching that, on that's the waterfall. The game. the game is a glitchy fucking mess. Like, pretty much you could, if you find a horse, you could just ride him up a mountain. And it's like almost vertically. It's yeah. really funny. The one horse I found was when I was trying to escape, because uh, I was, I was, I had a bunch of people after me. Um... And I couldn't figure out how to fucking ride the horse. Or maybe it's not one that I could ride. Uh, if you can't ride it, you, know, you can just steal it. Yeah. Um, I didn't figure it out. But anyway, I wanted to say I went. I found one new town. And I was very disappointed when I found out that I couldn't um, give give this child I found the same treatment that I gave the courier. Because you can't kill kids in the oh, game, Oh, yeah. Guess. No, the kids are fucking dickheads. Like, so it was, he, like an, it was like a little, a little village. Yeah. With like a little uh, water mill. There was one, but I don't think it's or the like, same one you're thinking of. Was that a lumber mill? Okay. It's not the same one we were at. Well, like, so you, found like a, you still found a kid and he's just like, huh, I bet I can beat you up or something. No, I, I definitely antagonized the kid. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, kid was okay. the kid was probably being fine. But uh, I tried to put an arrow through his head and uh, apparently he's Jesus because it didn't work. And then the whole town came after me. Uh, the town comes after you fuck with the kid, but the kid just... Most of the kids are just assholes. Fuck them. Yeah. Um, Have then, you ever tried to steal anything or pip pickpocket? Well, I'm getting to it. Okay. Um, because <laughs> after that, uh, I just let them kill me, and then I had to run all the way fucking back there. And when Thanks. I got back, um, or before I got back, actually, I tried to take a little shortcut by jumping through like a running waterfall, and. I ended up sliding between the waterfall and a rock and I uh, experienced another glitch where I could not move. It was like playing Coraline PS2 all over oh again. Oh gosh. <laughs> um so I like clicked to wait for like like 24 hours I think. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I, it actually made me wait for like 50 fucking seconds or some shit. Yeah, cuz you have to watch it go hour by hour. But I would. I, the screen I, was just black for me. Oh, well, I did think it was like really funny. Just that you could just wait a full day there. It's the same thing for uh, when you want to sleep. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly the same as in uh, Fallout. It kind well. of fixed it. Um, but then I got immediately glitched again, and then I just like kept button mashing till I got out of there. All right. So that, <laughs> that happened. happened. That yeah, happened. That happened. That, that happens time to time. Oh, oh wait 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 wait! Before I get on to the stealing, like uh, this game looks really nice at night, like uh, in oh, yeah. VR. Oh yeah, no, it does, it does look pretty nice. Like even still, I was looking it's at buggy, but it, it's you know if you let yourself be like immersed into it, you can spend so much time playing this game. I was just looking up at the stars and the fucking moon. The moon's fucking humongous. Um, I do want to see it in VR though. I really liked that. Except like shit comes out at night, so so I kind of avoided being out too much. Yeah, and uh, I waited till it was day at a certain point. But I I liked the visuals. I like the visuals generally. It does look really nice. Yeah, I like all in, the mountains and shit. All the mountains and like um and like the water still does look nice too. Like yeah. rivers and all that. It's not insanely uh, you know, it's. It's not it super would, detailed or it beautiful. It would be probably but disappointing like, if it like came out now and it's like, oh, because like, it looks like PS3 because it came out on the PS3. Yeah, but considering it came out in 2011, like yeah. it doesn't use like its graphics to its power. It uses like its scenery and like the world. Yeah, and the way it's done, it looks nice. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I went back to that village where I tried to kill the kid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try and kill the kid that time though. You I knew, just you I learned. Just, you knew better. Yeah, I just walked into someone's house and uh, <laughs> what did I take? I, I think I took like bread off of his table while he was looking at the fireplace. Yeah, <laughs> and nothing happened. And then it was like 
you can also steal his coins if you want. So I, st- I did. I stole one. So I did. I stole I coins. Stole one coin. Wow. And, and someone came in and was like, "Ha, we got you, you now. You should have never came here." <laughs> yeah, basically. And uh, I, I decided to pay my bounty of one coin. See, that was that. A I decided to do something different. See, I, I most people just are like, "I'm gonna fight you instead of pay your bounty." That's usually what I do. That's, this is the only time I did not do well, that. One coin, and it's because yeah. I really wanted to get somewhere else in the game. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. I wanted to see where they'd take me. You are just like, fuck it. And they took me to some place I couldn't fucking ever get out of after that. So, yeah. Oh, great. But they took um, me to uh, like another like castle kind of area. Yeah. And I, I don't remember the like the intricacies and shit. But eventually, essentially, I ended up raising hell there as well. And, Good. <laughs> and and uh, that's all was fun. And that's where I stopped playing eventually too, because gotcha. uh, once the entire town was after me, uh, I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't escape. Yeah, I couldn't. Oh, yeah. I couldn't What's find my way out of the area. Like I went all the way from where I started, and I went the opposite way thinking like oh this will eventually lead to the door out because it was like the biggest fucking village i'd seen in the game so far um but no like i can't i can't find my way out of the place it might have been a white run if they took you back there i have, have the no whole idea. town after you but whatever because that's all that's like the main area of the game that's why i keep saying it. it's a big place but, but that that's i was just gonna say that's also my experience when it comes to um stealing i don't know how the fuck people do it like do thief builds but every time i try to steal no matter fucking what no one else is there nothing i'm completely hidden and i'm fine i'll steal something off a table <laughs> guard right behind oh, me wait, I'm I just like, oh cool <laughs> like, I, it's like it was like my first experience with um um was it yeah it was gta 5 because it came out on ps3 like literally i'm out in like fuck all nowhere and i have nothing and i just go steal a car and then up oh, cops like the whole fucking swat team shows up and yeah, i get shot that's grand theft auto um yeah so th- that was my that's my experience stealing so i don't i didn't ever steal i, I didn't just, generally have trouble with the it, stealing it's just well I, that's just me like you can level up your sneak and I, pickpocketing skills so you're better at it yeah but i mean i just, I just gonna get to work and i just don't do that so i mean it's fine other people can like it's a whole other part of the game that you can explore which is great no i was just trying to fuck around like when i took yeah. whatever i like his bread or whatever and he didn't notice i was like i'm gonna take your coins now i was just fucking around um but while i was getting hunted down by this entire fucking town at once uh I just kept stealing the the breads and the cheeses and shit off the table <laughs> as I was running just around, just eating everything that <laughs> everything they had. <laughs> so just eat it before anyone finds out you took it. So I could just like prolong my, prolong my life as long as possible. Yeah. And eventually, um, well, I died once, and then it reset me in the middle of the fight, which I'm never going to win. Like I don't think I, that file's just fucked now. Oh. Like, <laughs> Like, cause I don't know how to get rip. out of there, and I'm in the middle of a giant fight. Um, That's a rip. <laughs> but <laughs> um, the second time, I went around and stole some food and ate it. Yes, of course. But uh, after that, I I backed myself into a corner and I took out like five of them. But there were still like ten of them. It was like three hundred. It was like mm-hmm. the end of three hundred. Damn. And. Uh, <laughs> And, you know, I got wrecked. Well, damn. Pretty bad. That, that, that happens, you know, where you just fuck a file over because you can't win. Yeah. Uh, I did that when I was fighting a dragon, and it took me, like, a good I never saw couple a dragon. hours. They just kind of appear, honestly. Like, I think if you... I'm assuming you didn't follow the main quest at all. Or I like didn't follow any quest. Any quests. quest, yeah. You just kind of, like, water. Which is fine. You could do that. Um, It's part of the game, too. I've done that enough. But I think uh, they don't start appearing unless you defeat like your first dragon which is part of the main mm. quest i could be wrong because like definitely when i be playing in wander like a dragon would just appear and i'm like well i guess this is my life for the next hour jesus <laughs> uh well they they can be hard like they really range in terms of like 
level. Some of them are easy as fuck, and it's just a matter of waiting them to like land so you can hit them. Uh huh. Others, the like you'll take like a sliver of health off, and you just have to run like a bitch. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. Um. So I guess question then did did you follow like any build or like what weapons did you use no i'm i just mostly used the strongest weapon i had at any point okay was it um, like a two-handed or no like i had a shield the whole time and i had some kind of axe that i don't know it looked like it was some kind of bone axe or something but bone axe. it was like sharp and it i, I really don't i all oh, right um skyrim does really Fucking weird ass Yeah, I weapons. didn't pay attention to what it was called. Um, okay, picked so up you some like a battle axe. Is a one handed axe then? I don't know. Yeah, it was, and I had a shield, and uh, it was like a weird kind of shield too. Like I wasn't using any of the like basic like steel axe or like steel shield. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. it was like the weird shit. Um, like some other like species like dwarven or whatever the fuck. Yeah, and I think I had a bunch Elvish. of I think I had a bunch of steel armor on the whole time though. Gotcha. Um, and I used a bow. Quite, yeah, I was gonna say I figured often. you would use the bow mostly because, like, I remember when watching you play, you would just take out the bow and just shoot people to fuck with him, and you ran out of arrows so goddamn much. Yeah, but I got a lot of arrows this time. I also learned how to use the lock picks. Yeah, cool. There you go. Lock picking is pretty fun, honestly. Some of them can be a bit bullshit, and you waste a lot of them. But I fell into someone's trap. Oh yeah, yeah. And, um, I went to find a treasure, and I, uh, <laughs> as I like walked up, because, because it was like a dungeon or cave or whatever yeah. the fuck they call them, and uh, there were no spiders in there, so it was good. Um, but at the end of it, it was like you could see the treasure chest. It was like fucking um, Legend of Zelda or something. Yeah, and there was like a, a runway up to it, whatever you call it. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, as I was walking towards it, I was like, this is a trap. And then <laughs> and then I fell, and the screen just went black, and I was falling, and I fucking took the headset off. I was like, I, I'm not ready if this is going to scare me. <laughs> but I fell down there, and it was, just, it was just like I was there. There was a dead guy, and there was another guy looking at me who was like, ha-ha, you fell in my trap. <laughs> nice. And then... You fell in my trap. So, mm. you know, I put it back on, and... Uh, <laughs> I picked the lock right in front of him. <laughs> and uh, while he was walking away like a villain talking about all the shit he's going to do to me, I just, you know, wrecked him with my axe. Nice. And uh, that was that. I escaped that area. I went back to get the treasure. And it was just some kind of skill thing. I don't know. A skill thing? Yeah, I just like leveled up or something. Like it, something magical happened there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you ever figure out the uh, the level system? Not really. I leveled up a few things, but I wasn't I wasn't too too interested. Gotcha. I got I only got to I was almost level ten, like fully. I don't know what the fuck level. Yeah, I my was my at. my level, like my overall level. Yeah, not the skills tree thing. Like my level was like I I was level nine, but it was like completely full. Pretty much. You so saw your level time. I'm, I'm, By the I'll end. that up for you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, fuck. So, I don't know. I, I would picture you, like, if you were getting into it, I could see you being, like, um, an archer build. Just level up your bow skills yeah. and just... Thunk. <laughs> I was just really back and forth with uh, using the bow and arrow and using the, the axe and shield. Whatever fit the situation the best. Yeah, see, I, I don't know. Like this, this is like why I wanted you to play it, just because again, everyone's like experience with this game. Like uh, games like it too, like Fallout. Sure, it's like but RuneScape. Like, like everyone's experience is a bit different. Yeah, unique but to their own, you know. In a way, in the way, the way I mean, it's like RuneScape. Is if you don't know the game, then like, God damn it, it's you're gonna be a noob for like ever. Yeah, I like mean, if you didn't grow up on this shit, you're just. Well, like I, pick- it takes a long time to pick up. Like, well, well, I picked it up for the first time like a couple of years ago, and like, but it- I was a noob for a while. But I, I just kind of like learn the world as I go and let yeah. myself like be in it. I guess, and but- like, I really uh, role played along with it. Like, 
I, I did um I saw the mage build. Like I imagine like yo, I'm an amazing sorcerer. Well, you, Honestly, magic is so fucking easy in the game, you just hold down left click. <laughs> yeah, but to and you walk backwards and you win. <laughs> but to understand like what's actually happening in the game, you really have to like that shit happens over time. Yeah. Probably best if you play it when you're like younger and more apt to learning an entire game world like like RuneScape or something. Um or like probably Minecraft. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe Minecraft is more Minecraft's fr- friendly to new players. I haven't played it. Minecraft oh the, I found my new rack. <laughs> so Um I, I think Minecraft is a l- pretty simple. Like there's not a whole lot else to learn. There's a lot there's a good amount of stuff to learn, but it's not as I guess dense as Skyrim is, kind of. Skyrim no, can so, be a bit dense, but honestly I don't really care a whole lot about like well, the lore and everything. I mean there's a lot of shit you can do, like Oh yeah, crafting, um, and alchemy. Oh yeah, that's why people spend so much time on this game. It's like that's their next life. Or There's something. so much shit that you can do. I mean, I There's like done... every, every item I got, I just stopped picking shit up like pretty goddamn soon because I was like, I don't know what any of this shit's for. And probably the way to learn that is by actually playing the game, like, <laughs> like doing yeah. the quests and shit, and they'll teach you as you go. Probably, yeah. But I mean, I was just like, "What? Why do I want a tusk to sell? Because they're worth a lot." Yeah, but I wasn't even. I was just stealing people's gold. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I guess that. Yeah, I see what you mean there. You weren't doing the quests and all that. Meanwhile, like when I was playing, I still haven't even finished the main quest. I would just kind of just do whatever, and if another side quest popped up in front of me, I'd be like, "Oh, because I'm gonna go do this," mm-hmm. and like. I even like a few things caught me by surprise. Like I was just walking and playing the game, like minding my own business, and then all of a sudden I get fucking cursed, and I'm and I'm a vampire. And that, like, okay, yeah, that didn't happen to me. Yeah, I didn't know you could become a fucking vampire in this <laughs> game. Like, I, and this was like late into like when I was just about to like put it down. Did you, know? you go bite anyone? No, I was like, I want this done because like being a vampire sucks. Really. I mean, you get like added, um, like sorcery shit, and you can turn into a bat and be invisible or whatever. But like, you can't just unvampire yourself. You, I had to go and look it up on the wiki to find out how to cure myself, and I had to do this really like stupid, convoluted fucking quest line. Oh, yeah, and if you're if you're out in the day, like your health just your guilt goes all the way down. Well, that's fine. It made it you can constantly do the weight thing. Yeah, I I, I don't think I thought about that, but like oh. it just made. But oh, also like, no matter what, everyone um around you is hostile to you, and you couldn't do anything about it. That's me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I found it really annoying to like get anywhere, and like I'm just so, like, oh, person's at after me, yay. So that's just part of the game. If you go with the quest, you eventually like it's you get turned into a vampire. No, not the main quest. No, I, I just kind of, I just kind of happened to me. I don't even know how. Okay. Like I, my character must have tasted blood or some shit. I don't fucking know how. Where are you going? You taking off your sweatshirt? I'm taking off my jacket. Yeah. Um. Any other thoughts? I mean, I'm just telling you about my experience and like. Oh, I guess last thing after I did that, as I found like, um, a magic school. School bus. Yeah, that was cool, but it was like it was like a college thing for like sorcerers. So I was like, "Oh hell yeah, this is my jam!" Where like I actually get to learn like proper shit. I just pretty much spent the whole game just like collecting a bunch of spells and shit to learn. I got a spell and be at one a point, sorcerer and all that. Yeah, you get one pretty early in the game. No, like I don't remember where I got it, but it just like froze people, I guess. Oh, it was like an ice one. Yeah, I used it when I was getting overrun was by like, the town. <laughs> yeah. Um. Whoa, what? 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 Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you hear that? It's a uh, Fantano. Oh, did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Oh, I love that. <laughs> you're the best. You're the best. Yeah, he says like ten other things. Oh too. man. Um. Skyrim. Um. Forever. <laughs> so, I guess last question. Okay. Um. If you had this, like, just um, with a uh, not VR version, because that seems like because you you say you said before you would play this more if it wasn't, um, would you still like pick it up every so often or possibly like 
play it for the actual quests or story and all that. I might. Um, the thing is, with it being like RuneScape, it's like a really specific kind of thing. Um, you know the commitment you're making if you get into a game like Skyrim. Yeah, and like or RuneScape can, for that matter. Yeah, and if you get into it, you can easily spend you're, you're gonna a know lot life of it. your time into it. Yeah, it's which, really easy to do that. It's easy to know life, which like I try to avoid at this point in my life. Like maybe I'll get back into wanting to do that. And I definitely in to the know past life a game. Yeah, in the past I definitely wanted to do that, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't fit like this current um stage in my life so so currently no but that doesn't reflect my opinion of the game so you would but just probably not now and and like you know if you get if you get other things then you probably know yeah like it's like destiny like i avoid shit like that that gotcha wants you to keep playing i would forever i would know life a game honestly and and i have (laughs) um but at least for at least for a while you know Mm -hmm. like you know it doesn't have to be like well, it's like your addiction, you know. You don't when have to you, stick with it. When you do, it's like pretty great. Like when I think back on any time that I was completely like engulfed in RuneScape and like great memories, honestly, mm-hmm. just yeah. being totally like wanting to do that with all of well, my same time. here with um TF2, Minecraft, and well Skyrim and Fallout. When those were when I was starting to know life, those a little bit. A game can be a nice cradle. Oh yeah, for so, sure. And it's just, it just becomes muscle memory. Uh, I did forget to point out, like, I mean, it's definitely one of these games that you can. It's notorious for being for no life in it as well. Uh-huh. And I was just gonna add, um, my my good friend Megan, she got really into Skyrim like about the same time when I was like starting to like, eh, like slow down a little bit, and she got like really heavy into the game. I should let her play uh, VR. Yeah, you should. And um, well, she ended up doing a lot more shit and getting a l- getting a lot uh, fancier shit than me. I was just like, damn. <laughs> she she no like the shit out of that game, and um, yeah, she still loves it. But I think uh, I don't know. Maybe she just can't play or just doesn't. I don't fucking know. Like that's the same as RuneScape too. You like you have to know what's like valuable and what's not, and you have to. Yeah, but that like if I got something really cool, I'd be like, oh. Like but, I wouldn't know, <laughs> but that doesn't that doesn't take a whole lot of time, honestly, to find out what's. Well, good yeah, what's if not. you look it up and well, shit. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't look up any guy when I was first playing Skyrim. I was just like, "Fuck it, just do do me in game. Uh, I'm in." And I I'm was just, just wandering around, just doing whatever. I'm just overall too ignorant on it at this point. Yeah, I mean, because you just kind of go walk around, and fuck around, but it's it's digestible. It's not like it's too much. Um. It, IMO, it, it could look like it, but yeah. if you spend some time on it and you actually play it for like the quests and like you know spend some more time on it, it's it's digestible, I think. But yeah, anywho, I guess that's, that's yeah. It for I, that. I guess I'll rate it first. Yeah, then go ahead and rate. Oh fuck, I don't have a rating for it. And you'll you'll Shit. rate mine first, so we don't uh, we don't influence each other at the last second. Yeah. Um. Okay. So for what it is. Um, I think it's really solid. Um, if I was going, if I was going to try and rate this objectively, it's like, it's at least a nine out of 10, right? For sure. I don't think like, like anyone who's looking for a game like this, it isn't going to be let down. (laughs) Yeah. This game's like a phenomenon. Oh yeah. It's like, it's, you know. There's a reason why people still play it, and it's like st- still great and being remastered all this all these fucking times since 2011. It came out. It fucking rocked the the internet. Yeah. So it became the next WoW. So yeah, and like it's still played. Um, and if it's the yeah. it's it's the one like no one knows this has Elder Scrolls Five. It's just Skyrim. It's Skyrim. I never hear Elder Scrolls. Scrolls. I just hear Skyrim. So, yeah. Um, well, yeah, because they're making a uh, Elder Scrolls Six at some point in the next year. But there, there are others. There you go. I'm uh, trying to be but, as objective as possible. Yeah. Um, okay. Then I think your it opinion fills that hole for a lot of people. It's a nine. In your opinion. Oh well, for me, um, 
I've only played the VR version. I'm giving Skyrim VR uh, a seven. A four out of five. <laughs> a seven. All right. Uh, personally, but Skyrim itself, I'd say it's a nine. Nine out of ten. What do you give Skyrim? Uh, well, it's been a while since I played it. Um, I could probably check on Steam when the last time was, but it was probably over two years ago that I played it, so... It's not as fresh in my memory. So far, like, the thing I remember is what you just showed me with the mammoth glitching out. Mm -hmm. It's a glitchy fucking mess, but it's great, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's really, it's like, it's adult Play-Doh, I guess. It can be whatever you want. You can fuck around with it. You can, it can be a glitchy mess, or it can be, like, this fucking RPG experience where you go slay dragons and you're the chosen one and shit. And you get all this fucking, um, um, fuck, interchangeability, I guess, of, like, you get to pick whatever fucking, like, what you're proficient at. Like, you can be a two-hand or warrior, or you can be an archer, or in my case, a fucking mage, and the game will let you do that. So, mm-hmm. um, at least with my experience, I had a lot of fun just finding new places, the only part where I was like, oh, fuck this is when it made me be a vampire, which I fucking hated. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, oh, what's even the benefits of it? Uh, not not a whole lot, but you know, you can be a vampire. You can also be a fucking werewolf if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. But like, there, there's just a lot of layers that in this game that isn't really there in a lot of open world RPGs. It's the anymore. Shrek of video games. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I think... Um, this game kind of stands like on the shoulders, uh, like stands next to um, uh, Fallout New Vegas. From what people say about that, which you haven't played, which be, I haven't played. To be I've, clear, I mean, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to. I only played Fallout Four. That was my first Fallout. Um, but everyone says, um, talks about New Vegas in the same light that I'm talking about this. Like you can just do whatever. You can make your character super customizable. I'm I'm digressing a bit. Personal experience, um, I'm feeling a strong eight to a light nine <laughs> on this one. I think I, I think I'd more or less lean on eight though. Okay, just I, I don't, I, I'm just not as fresh into it and like. I mean, I, I gave it a seven for my personal experience. Yeah, so I guess like personal experience, I guess same like. I think the, okay, the combat is clunky as shit. You know that's why I'm like, eh. The fighting with actual weapons just looks like, eh, eh, you just whack them against it, and like, you can never seem to like actually like fight someone with those weapons without getting hit. And then meanwhile, when you level up magic as much as I did, it's a fucking joke. You just hold both your spells at them and walk backwards. I still <laughs> think for what it is, uh, it it's pretty much. Oh yeah, yeah you, you get some mark. You could just. Pick it, it up the and then just fucking just go and just that that's your life pretty much. It's easy to spend a lot of time to and let yourself just get involved with the world that's going on and again you can just do a whole bunch of side quests and the main story will just be there chilling when you're ready for it. So you're giving it an eight. I thought I'll give it a strong eight. Cool. Strong eight to a light nine. Then uh let us move on. We've got um about forty five minutes. Okay, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so we we, we spent a lot of time on Skyrim. Um, we're going to discuss my recommendation for you next. The movie. I'm excited. Mo- the movie, uh, yeah, we, this is, I feel like we would talk more about this than Skyrim, so I'm surprised. I thought we would, so now I'm scared because we don't have so much time. Um, and we have a third topic. Okay, um, fuck it. Well, we can make, we can, we can make this quick. Um, I'm going to kind of improv this in a little bit we're talking about as structure but we're talking about good recommendation goodwill hunting hunting. everybody starring um matt damon matt damon um (laughs) robin williams and the other fellow uh ben affleck ben affleck yeah yeah and uh mini driver yeah mini driver well yeah well that was the woman yeah, that, that was, was Skyler. Oh, Skyler, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as I heard that she was my, that she had my name, I was like, oh, of course. This is why this is why I recommended to me. Did you? Uh, she has my name. I didn't even think about it. And she laughs like me. She does. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Did you take notes? And 
and she plays piano. Yeah, I mean, I took I, some notes too. I, I stopped taking notes like kind of halfway through the movie, but they were they were a good amount. Good. Yeah, I see. I started. But, uh, I watched this movie twice in the last week, and were, and I just watched the whole director's uh, commentary with uh, Matt Damon. Um, Ben Affleck and Honestly, Gus Van Sant, the director. Some yeah. of these were like first impressions, predictions, um, and me just trying to be cheeky. But I do like remember um, what my thoughts were. Like this movie, like really sticks with sticks with you. Honestly, okay, it's, you liked it. It's one. Of, oh yeah, I really liked it. Like it, it definitely like it's one of those where like I didn't think a whole lot about it today, but thinking back, I was like. Oh yeah, shit! I should watch that. I, honestly, I need to. I should watch it again. I recommend. I, th- I think. It, I think it does deserve at least one or two rewatches. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I'll go in order. Um, sure. I was eating Chipotle, so I had to pause it a couple times as after I finished eating to like jot some of these downs. But I did like the kaleidoscope intro. Yeah. And the um and the music that accompanied it. Like I thought it was kind of it was pretty unique. In terms of our style. And like it does. It does do a callback to it later in the movie, if I remember. Yeah, with and like, yeah. Oh yeah, obviously spoilers. Yeah, for, we're gonna, I'm gonna spoil the shit out of this. Like, I can't structure it so like one part is isn't and the other part. Spoilers is. for anything we cover here, really. Yeah, I, obviously. I but, always forget to say that. Yeah, like I forgot what I think it was just like he was dazed or something or like or whatever. But I know I, I remember the kaleidoscope thing. It came, came back. back when uh, I thought it was really I thought it was pretty cool. And it wasn't it didn't seem very forced. It but. came back when uh his when in the in the big scene uh that we're gonna get to um when when Will's um foster dad was mentioned. I just watched it today. Oh okay. Uh that's yeah. that's I, when I remember, you see it again yeah. but you might see it again somewhere else. I, other I, than I, I remember like I remember it came like later in the movie, but like at yeah. that point, I was my mind was like just being fucked up from a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of things. So I was thinking about other stuff and like my thoughts of like jotting stuff down mentally. So that's why I think it deserves a rewatch. Um, you don't see Robin Williams for thirty three minutes. Yeah, I mean, you, you told me that, but <laughs> you told me that before, so I was yeah. just like, okay, yeah, he's a he's a supporting uh, character. So uh-huh. and I did say like on the line underneath it, I said, "Damn, this music nice." So I must have really liked the uh, the intro. Music okay. Okay. Piano. I thought you meant something else, but yeah. we'll get there. Oh yeah, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> and then next thing, um, you the university professor is a douche. I called it. Oh, you don't like uh, you don't like. I know the actor Stellan Skarsgård. Yeah, La- okay, Lambo. Skarsgard. Lambo. You don't like him? Um, but that's that's is that his name? Do the um won the prize and everything. No, I just called it. That was like a prediction, just because like. He had an apple in his hand. You're talking anyone who has an apple and is a douchebag. You're talking about the guy who worked with Will. Yeah. Wait, what are you saying about him? I just said that he was a douche when I first saw him. But I like that. That's what that was my prediction. I guess I was just like, yeah, this university professor is probably a douche. Uh, so you didn't think he was um, being selfless. Oh no! Like I, 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 still got his um. Okay, I, I was okay. Whatever. So in the in in the context of the story, like I get his point of view of what he wants, but I think it's he is like the the antagonist, quote unquote, if you could call him that. I don't like. I see, I, I don't think, see it that way. I think near the end he gets pretty damn unlikable after Robin Williams like show is like the when they talk to each other yeah but is, they, is the is the opposite and they clash a bit they have their own history so I really like that uh, oh yeah like it, it honestly this whole movie just seems like it's a it's like a cut of life like all the characters feel real like there's a they, they, they all have history mm-hmm. and they all are going somewhere and it's just. And there's no um, there's no epilogue in the movie. It just kind of no. ends, mm-hmm. and yeah, and everyone and it's just like oh, life goes on, I guess. And like this is like the event that you're seeing here, just a part of everyone's life, just <laughs> kind of meeting, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I know you were trying to say that quickly, but I just uh, I think I liked his character actually. Uh, in the commentary, they were talking about how his character 
on paper was written totally like completely shallow like just a plot device i think but, if he was but the actor really brought him fully to yeah, life if he was a plot device then it'd be of course like oh he's just an asshole but like the actor really i, I don't i don't like like his um mentality but i i know where he's coming from like i get it it makes sense yeah like, the, it's human the scene where uh will burns the paper and um you know, and he gets down, and uh, they he has that little monologue that ends with like when Will closes the door, and yeah. he, he says like, "And I have to watch you like waste it all." Like, yeah, he was like, "Oh no," he said, "Um, um, like I wish most days I wish I never met you because I could sleep easier at night knowing someone like you doesn't exist." Yeah. Closes the door and and watch you like and watch piss you it all away yeah. or something. Um, so. Like, it's just this guy um, is watching basically like a god. Oh, yeah. No, I it, like it totally yeah. it makes sense. And he wants to see him succeed. But it's a little he doesn't he doesn't really take Will's um, like personal want. So it's like, it, two, yeah, he doesn't consider it's that. like no. two sides yeah, I just, of the story that you get. Yeah. Oh. Until. Like the scene. Okay, I'm, we're getting like really fucking like yeah, well, sidetracked. I just want to say like I yeah. I'll, just I'll to, get to, to that to later. Get to it in short. I don't think he was like the hero or anything. I just don't think he was like douchebag. Like primary enemy number one. I mean, as soon as I saw him, I like like with the apple in his hands, like, okay, he's a douche. I don't remember <laughs> the apple. That's funny. Uh, I, as soon as uh, uh, this just okay, think about it. Like you see a character eat an apple, you, it's impossible to not eat an apple and not look like it. It's hard. To, okay, it's impossible <laughs> to eat an apple and not look like a douchebag in a or movie. The bad guy, I guess. Period. Oh, all right. <laughs> in real life, don't try, eat apples. Try eating an apple and not looking like a total asshole. All right. Okay. C- continuing. Um, I didn't know the whole setting, so I just wrote eighties question mark because I might have saw the um. I don't know. I think I, I don't remember what I saw. But you I was just, like, just hey, mis- mistaken, like the way they're talking for like being dated instead of just being like that's it's Boston. Oh, I didn't know it was Boston until like the second half. Yeah, that's like but, why like, they talk the way but, they but do. It was, but it was fine. I was just like, I don't need to know that. And then I just wrote all cast Matt Damon because <laughs> I saw him and I had to say it out loud. <laughs> and I was like, he a janitor. Um, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then it set up like okay, so. Like oh, set solve the prop, solve this in crazy ass math problem. It was a little like calculus or some shit to me, or like some advanced trigonometry or whatever. Um, and I was like, oh, you get um, uh, you get a the scholarship. And then as soon as I saw him walk past the board and look at it, I was like, okay, he's probably gonna try and solve it because it's shocking. And, like he goes for it. And then what I thought, I thought he was gonna like spend the whole movie trying to solve it, and maybe Robin Williams was a math professor trying to help him. It was gonna be like an underdog story. Okay, so that was just your prediction. Yeah, that's what I thought was gonna happen. So okay. I wrote down a prediction of like my impression, and then later I put yeah the last the last line I said on the notes is this is pretty much the opposite of what I thought it was gonna turn out. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> I thought it was gonna be an underdog story, and it turns out to be an overdog story. So and then you just started to pay attention a lot. No, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it was still setting up, and like it was being funny and cheeky still. <sighs> Um, well, uh, I mean, he is kind of an underdog because he hangs out with like yeah. the quote, like the losers, um, and like he and his fr- he's his friends are, <laughs> um, you know, stupid <laughs> compared to him, as the movie points out. Yeah, I mean, kind of underdog, but like he's so overqualified. So like, I thought it was gonna be like the plot of Ratatouille or some shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where it's like, oh, it's a loser, but it turns out like. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna try to like do something good. And then, oh, he's a prodigy oh, or some shit. Um, and then I didn't notice the the accent for a while, so I was like, "We in Jersey, New York, Philly?" Didn't notice the accent. Yeah, the Boston. Yeah, and then um, and then we go back to the I the, thought the chalkboard, been. and then he goes it, and I was just like, "Oh no, he sells it quick." <laughs> <laughs> um, and I said, "Okay, professor, don't know who did it." Probably not going to believe it was Damon when he finds out because he's going to be like, "Really him?" So I still thought I was going to be an underdog story like here mm-hmm. on um <laughs> and i had a comment on this because like they're at the baseball game and like um i think like the the greaser looking dude the little league game. yeah the little league game and like the greaser looking dude is like oh cool striped pants nice ass and i was like no she doesn't <laughs> oh okay i was like no like bro 
Um, and then and then the scene in the car, I was like, these guys got funny voices. Yeah, I really, I, yeah, the, I, I was I was laughing when he was just like, he's a fucking cheeseburger. <laughs> he's a fucking cheeseburger. <laughs> Yeah, that was good. Like, you're gonna be like, "What the fucking cheeseburger?" Like, "Oh, you want to like buy it for a dollar and put it on layaway?" <laughs> so I the was like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, the guy who was arguing with uh, Ben Affleck's character a lot is actually uh, his brother in real life, Casey Affleck. What What was his name again? It was like, uh, which one? The guy that the guy that kind of like Billy Joe, Casey Affleck. Uh, in the movie. In the movie, like. <laughs> I, I I heard his name a couple of times. But I just didn't write it down, but he kind of looked like a mix between um, uh, Billy Joe Billy Joe Armstrong and Sid Barrett. Okay, and he was just kind of idiot the whole time, and I really liked him. <laughs> um, a lot of his shit was improv. I found out oh, from the comedy that's or cool. from the commentary yeah. track as well. That's cool because he was mostly an idiot the whole time. So and he was, I think he was one of the funnier. He was the funniest one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then yeah, so then uh, I guess the scene where it's um. The professor and he's like oh who saw that problem is that we're on it says something like i don't know he said math magician i just had to put that in quotes in the notes i was just like magician um might have, he might have said something like mask the math magician will be unmasked or something i don't fucking know so i guess that would make sense and then they wrote another problem on there i was like oh he's gonna solve this problem too and then um and then and then he got into a fight for no reason well, uh, Which I didn't really know why, other than like, oh, I guess it was a beef. It was the same guy from the from, from the, the from the little from the game. Yeah, yeah I, I got that. I just don't well, know why they he were, picked a fight with him. They were looking to fuck shit up. Like that's essentially yeah. What I they didn't, were doing. but I didn't know like, oh, this dude's a juvenile. I was just like, okay, so like he's an underdog worker, like <laughs> secretly like super smart. I was like, why is he picking? Yeah, a fight? It, it's so seen- that's why I have to rewatch it, knowing what his character is. Yeah, and I thought the fight scene was a little cheesy because it was like yeah. in slow mo, and there was like um like happy Appar- music going on yeah i guess some of and it then it was, got a little rough like he was just fucking wailing on him so yeah because like it's showing that so he's, it, it got, was, he's it got was, some anger and it was a little cheesy but not a whole lot and then i was just like how's he not arrested <laughs> well yeah he was oh yeah he was <laughs> but like i don't know the cops just roughed him up a little bit and then they just left him alone um because then he was then it goes back to him being in the school so no he went yeah, he went to court. He went but to court. I was yeah. just like, I don't know how he wasn't immediately in the cop car, I guess. And then I had to put in quotes, hey, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. When, um, when he was just like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you solving that problem? He's like, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. He's just like, no, what's your name? He was just like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> I just love that. Um, what was I going to say? Um, did, that, did you catch that line uh, from Casey Affleck's character? Um, where he was like, my boy's wicked smart. <laughs> oh, like at the bar? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right, right, right after he charms in, he's just like, my boy's wicked smart. Yeah, when he tells Skylar that. Yeah, that's like, uh, I don't know, there's like a t-shirt that says wicked smart on it. And oh, like, really? Yeah, that's like, it's a... Uh, it's like a famous line, I guess. Oh, also to a degree, and he improv that. Yeah. I found also, out. it was hilarious when he was like, "Quit jerking off in my mom's room." <laughs> that's my little <laughs> league glove. Yeah, that's my little. You did it, my little league glove. He's like, "No," nah. and he's just like, "No, nah, I just use it for cleanup." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, I love that character. But yeah, also I liked how they like. Apparently, he just fucking came down with that glove too. Like they didn't expect him to. Oh, that's great. Wow. Yeah. So like his character is almost completely improv. That's great. Yeah, actually, um, that that that's adding a whole other thing for it. <laughs> um, but I did like how they just like now I'm thinking I like how they introduced Skylar without like, oh, this is this character. It's just like it's just some chick at a bar. Yeah, and you know? uh, and then she just becomes an important thing. And later. it was Chucky, uh, Ben Affleck's character, who was originally uh, hitting on her too. Yeah, yeah, no, I got, oh, well, yeah, I got that obviously. So like, and and that's where like the um the next thing I just said like when um. When Matt Damon was just like talking up this fucking pony hail, ponytail motherfucker. At first, I thought like, "Oh, this is their boyfriend." I'm like, "Okay, no, he's just being that's a, what I thought. He's too. just being a douche or something." Because uh-huh. I thought it was going to be a fart, a fart, a fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just said, "All right, Matt Damon is a genius." I didn't follow a goddamn thing in this scene. Yeah, he, how quick he was just talking. Even just as an actor, but it was really cool to just see. I was just it was satisfying just to see this fucking Harvard fuck get wrecked, mm-hmm. and then. <laughs> I thought it was a little stupid, but was still enjoyable just because Matt Damon's performance. When yeah. like later he sees him in the diner, it's just like, "Oh yeah, hey, you, you like, like apples? apples? 
I, I got, got a num- number. How I was, do you like I like them apples. <laughs> and then I saw it was a 555 number. And I was yeah. like, bro, that's a fake number. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, but yeah, that was that was super like corny. But Matt Damon's performance just it, it makes it work. I don't know, like it made it enjoyable. Still, it's an old movie. Like it makes yeah. sense. That old movie's as old as us. I was like, and then yeah, I said, ah, her name's my name. She laughs like me too. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, and then and then Robin and then I stopped taking notes because then when like, Robin Williams showed and then, up and then Robin Williams got introduced and I was like, okay, cool. He's a professor and I'm like, I'm liking this. I start to get more invested in the characters and all that. I mean, like, yeah, there seemed like there was like a huge, like, um, like difference between like oh people who are going to the Harvard and like the professors and then the working class. You know, when like the professor was trying to find out Will's name and all that, and he was like, "Oh, it's Professor this." You know, just like, "Oh yeah, I don't give a fuck." Yeah, <laughs> and uh, what's his name, Lambo. The professor, that's what I mean. The math professor sees uh, Robin Williams as a failure. Oh like, yeah, because he's working at fucked up, he's yeah. working at the community college. Um, like he sees, yeah, he just like has him, but himself like, on a pedestal. I, I told you as soon as like I saw the cover of the movie and saw that it was Robin Williams in a beard, I was like, God damn it, I don't want to be <laughs> sad doing this. Did it make you sad? Oh yeah, seeing Robin Williams smile with that beard, it's just like ah. Oh. How I did you like every time? Like just like seeing him, seeing him smile like that, and just like knowing that he's he's just happy with his life, even though like he's got like so much misfortune happening with him, but he's just content with who he is. I was just like, that's the kind of smile you get. I mean, that's that's just fuck. That's the kind of like uh, impression I get just from his fucking smile. Yeah, he was he was great in this movie. Oh yeah, too. and then I'll, and then all I said like afterwards was. God damn that Robin Williams scene. The one with uh, him and Will on the bench. The, oh, okay, okay. That was like uh, his Oscar moment. Oh, yeah. I was like, definitely. Uh, I, had a, I had to rewatch that scene twice. That's why it won. Just to like, I was just like, fuck. <laughs> you know? The scene right before that, I really liked too. Uh, just so we don't skip over it. Um, oh, uh, oh. Where they uh, had their the first, first meeting. meeting. Yeah. And, and he uh, rocks his fucking world. Yeah, because... Yeah. Uh, Will starts going in on him like he did on the other therapists, like trying to antagonize him, and he just grabs him by the throat. Yeah, and he's just like, if you fucking talk to me like that, I will end you, you know? Or like, if you talk shit about my life, or something. And like, you get like a sense, like, because he was just like, you work out, and he's just like, yeah, it's free weights. And I'm like, oh yeah, what do you bench? 285, what about you? And then Will's just silent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, just imagine seeing Robin Williams, like, in beard and all, bench 285. I was just mm-hmm. like, Damn, but <laughs> I did think that scene escalated just a bit quickly out of nowhere. Just like he seemed like Robin Williams' character just seemed so like well put together, and as soon as he was like, "You made the wrong woman," he just got way too pissed. But I think yeah. it. Uh, but I was just like how he was like, "Watch it, Chief." For me, he just kept saying Chief, and I love that. For me, it worked because um, it was clearly. Um, a button that well, yeah, it was like Will it was, hit too close to home. That Will was pushing. I just thought it was it came like, too I, quick out of I'm nowhere, just, and there were no other signs of that. Like I'm just, I guess, saying. Well, we just met the character. Yeah, but yeah, but, I, and now with the context that um, spoiler, his, his wife's been dead for two years. Mm-hmm. Like now, that makes sense. So watching, yeah, it again, the following scene where yeah. he explains what happened with his wife, and so I guess like. It, it, where he explains why he's not angry at Will anymore. I also love how they end that first scene was just like have him here on Thursday at four. Yeah, I, mean, I figured. I saw. I was like, yeah, I'm like of course we're gonna have more beings. They're they're the two on the cover. Come on, <laughs> you know. Well, clearly, yeah, but it's I don't know. I'm not thinking about it like that. I'm just thinking about it in the context of the story. Yeah, I mean, in the context of the scene too, it's like. You know, you don't. He doesn't know about it, but like he's, you know, we don't know. Like on the outside, it's like, oh yeah, he's fine. You know, he's content with his life and all that. And like, but deep down, he's still hurting from this. Mm-hmm. So like, of course, we're not gonna know because it's again that snippet of life. I um, just loved how real uh, his character was. Like, he was human, and he was treating uh, Will like a human. And like, it wasn't like he was this professional that was only like connecting with him on like of on like a fake i can't think of a better word 
but like he was connecting with him on like on a, a genuine genuine yeah like he was connecting with him on a genuine like human to human level and that's why it worked yeah as opposed to like strictly professional like you don't feel like there's a connection mm-hmm. which is what most people are scared of when they like when they think about seeing therapy yeah. is it like oh they're not going to understand like you're not talking to someone that would get it it doesn't become personal it mm-hmm. just you know you're talking to someone you're and, paying like, someone to yeah to listen well not yet yeah, not only just paying someone to listen but it's just like you know um i don't know there's just that disconnect and like it kind of here it just makes it it breaks it down to the most the most genuine it can be and in that in that scene in that park scene just god damn that fucking scene he just wrecks the shit out of it <laughs> yeah that was that's a good scene. Yeah, I need to. I I would rewatch this whole movie again just to, so I can see that scene again. <laughs> um, really, and, not the not the end scene. Well, okay, well, I'll get to there. Okay. Um, I didn't think, honestly, that Robert Williams would be on par with Matt Damon's performance. You and, thought Matt Damon would be better? I thought Matt Damon. I was I was seeing Matt Damon like you know I was watching Will this whole time and I was just like. He's killing it. Like I think he's giving a great performance. And then Robin Williams shows up. I'm like, fuck! Oh god, <laughs> there's the scene, so much talent here. The scene where uh, Matt Damon and uh, Skyler were fighting. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah, I would get to that. But that was a uh, that was uh, that was god, a rough it scene. Moved me, yeah. yeah. Um, I, and I just said, oh yeah. So like after that scene, um, I was just like, I, I just jotted down like I think everyone coming out of high school or going early into college should watch this movie. And I said solid seven so far. Okay. Like after that scene, because honestly, like which scene are you saying the, after the, the, the park? The, the park, yeah. Okay. The bench scene. It might have been like afterwards, like the first, like, um, um, the next meeting, and that I was just still thinking about that scene the whole time. So, because like when he's talking about him, he's just like, you don't know, a goddamn thing about this or this, you know. I was just like, well, shit, like, because you know, every every kid, yeah. like like um, Will. It's like every every senior in high school, or like you know, he's read all out, the books, or yeah, or like yeah, he's like oh, big tough guy, like fucking indestructible, you know, and like you don't know, you know, a goddamn thing. The first thing about living life, yeah, that's you, just like the teenage mentality that like oh, like I already, you think when you're 18 that you already know everything, you can't be better until like life kicks you in the balls in your early 20s, and then you you become you're more humble and you start to learn more. Like yeah, you can recite all these books, but you don't know what the um, uh, what, what it means. No, no, no. Like, what did he say about you don't know what the smell of the chapel? Oh yeah, you don't know what the hell what the Sistine Chapel smells like, and yeah. you haven't looked up to see that beautiful artwork or something. The mural, yeah, you haven't been there, yeah. Like just the way it was put was fucking great. Well, just everything about it. Like, I need to rewatch just that scene even more. Mm-hmm. But like, that's why it's like. You know, every like, I think I feel like everyone should be seeing this in when they go into early adulthood. I agree. You know, um, and that's how that's like how important I think that scene was, and like, and this movie just builds off of that, and like, mm-hmm. that's what I mean. Like at the snippet of life, like I definitely got that feeling. I guess when I first saw, um, you know, Glendale Community College, and I was like. The, it just that revelation. I was like, "Oh shit, I'm not the top guy anymore. Like, I'm nobody here." Mm-hmm. You know. And then I was like, "Fuck, I got like, I'm I'm nothing." You know, mm-hmm. going going into adulthood. But most people don't know that. You know, like if they're in, depending on everyone's situation. So I'm not gonna talk other than that. Um, no notes other than that. I was just really interested to see their dynamic. Okay. Um. um just playing through so i didn't like jot anything else down until like n- um he sees skylar next and like otherwise and then then we start learning more about the character about his like abandonment issues and all that yeah and uh the other two probably most notable scenes would be i think when he and skylar get in their tip yeah i mean last thing last thing i wrote down was and she plays piano and then, yeah. and then they went on that like that date. Oh, I love um, how he, yeah, how he described that, uh, how he can do his math. Yeah, but as a piano player, and like when he says like Beethoven could just play, I'm like, no, <laughs> maybe Mozart. That's how prodigies work, but not Beethoven. Beethoven worked his ass off to be that to be that good. 
Okay, they should have said Mozart instead of Beethoven. But well, yeah, he said both. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, that's just that's a nitpick, honestly. Like Beethoven was abused by his father, so he was that good. And yeah, held, I knew there was held a, a lot of anger because of it. But I that's knew, why Beethoven was like probably my favorite composer, just because it seemed like he since he wor- he worked his way to greatness. Yeah. It, was, it was tragic, but he worked his way up there rather than just being born with it like mozart yeah i knew there was uh an example of what he was talking about where there was a classic pianist who could just like look at it and be like but he could play it <laughs> you yeah, know? That, that's definitely mozart mozart yeah. was a prodigy he was like so there you he go. wrote his mozart wrote his first symphony when he was seven years old yeah there you go. child prodigies and they, they still exist so like that was a good analogy but like I mean, Should have said their, Mozart, I guess. Yeah, well, he did say Mozart. He said Mozart and Beethoven. Oh, but okay. Still, he did. Um, that was against him, including Beethoven, was a nitpick on my part, but it's fine. You know, most people will say he's a prodigy just because he's one of the greatest composers of all time. But I digress. Yeah, um, we gotta move along. So let's talk about the yeah, last yeah. couple. I mean, things. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. So like when they went on that date, like when he took her out, like I thought it was like okay, he's being sweeter now, and then like. I just see like the f- kind of frame frame that she's being put in and everything. And after we learn more about Robin Williams' character, that Robin Williams' character is touching as shit. Uh, he just uh, he lost his wife, and like you can tell, like he's still broken up about it, and like dealt with true loss. He's so, got like, a lot of great lines. So, like, in this with, movie. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, just his character is just like so touching. Maybe and, you're like, perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to break. Maybe that. you don't know that yet. Yeah, or Ooh. something. Yeah, and like. And then as soon as we get to that date with Skylar and like we see just the lighting, the frame rate, I was like, I just thought she better not die. <laughs> you thought she was gonna? <laughs> I thought die. she was, I thought she was gonna die at the end of the movie, and that no. was and that was gonna change Will. But uh, I was like, I just said she better not. And then um, I don't know what happened to have me write this down, but I just said fucking Robin Williams with the beard makes me sad. It's so great. <laughs> um, so. Was there any other scene you wanted to comment okay, on? Okay, yes. Um, the, them fighting in the dorm where like, it breaks. I mean, I'm, it, it did feel like a lot of time had passed and they'd been seeing each other for a while. So that's that's like the context I'm putting it under because otherwise it seems like... The, yeah, they it, also it, like, said... Their bickering came out of nowhere, but I'm just like, okay, it might have been like a couple months or something. And just like... It, 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 it feels like it's going to resolve like when she's like... To just say you don't love me and if you want if you don't like i'll i'll be I, I won't be in your life anymore and then she's and then like it looks like she's getting to him and then she kisses she goes to, like kiss him on the forehead for like comfort and right after she does it he looks and just like i don't love you and leaves and i was just like fuck <laughs> like, um, god damn that hit like a fu- and then seeing her oh god seeing her cry like that was too real that's- like that was really believable crying like after you hear that mm-hmm like that, I don't know. That, that was just good on the on the actress's part in terms of the performance. In the scene, uh, I again, I don't know. I did think it was uh, believable how it escalated, but well, like from there, yeah. But I mean, like from scene to scene, I mean, I, in terms okay. of like context, yeah, because it it cut from a scene of them together immediately. Yeah, to I that. mean that scene by itself, I think was fine. Uh, know? yeah, they cut them together pretty quickly. So that, that's what I mean. But like, I'm assuming get, time like, passed in we, between there. We know enough about Will's character at that point, and he even says everything you need him to say in that scene to understand why he's freaking out because he's yeah. just, you know he's got the abandonment issues and everything. Yeah, and um, he's just like really like you know really did a number on him, twisted him up. All right, but just, just uh, fuck, see a scholar cry like that was so like oh that was hard. And then when he called her again, like even like I don't know when she was like I won't call you and she's she'd be gone. The fact that they were on the phone together just immediately told me like oh my gosh, she still like loves him. And she said that, and then just he didn't, and then he didn't, and then. She just started crying over the phone again. I was just like, "God damn, <laughs> that it's hard and it's believable. It's like really real stuff, you know." Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, that, that's where like the roughest parts were happening for me. And and like I, and the the parts with um, Robin Williams' character and the professor, we can't. Those scenes were great too, and like that's where like they really um like their both mentalities crash. I definitely obviously sided with Robin Williams. And it's just it's just so real. Like this is what real people would like talk about and deal with. 
Um, we and, can't not touch on the last meeting. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Well, we have and to. Then, we have to hurry it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the scene I really liked is like you get Professor's side, you get Ron Williams side, two polar opposites, and then you get um, Will's friend side, which I really liked his scene when they were at the construction park, and he was like, "Pack, pack," <laughs> and <laughs> uh, talk, and Chucky Boston. was like, um, "No, yeah. fuck you. You don't owe it to yourself. You owe it to me." Yeah, you don't. Yeah, fuck you. You don't want to sell. You owe it to me. No, what I really liked was like, you know, I said, yeah, I don't know much, but I know like the best part of every day is like that 10 seconds when I go up to your door and I knock and there's a chance that you're not there, that mm-hmm. you just went up and left. And he's like, if so, God help me. Like, if in, if when I'm 50 and you're still here, if when you're 50 and you're still here in Boston, I'm going to fucking kill you. Working laying bricks, I'm going to fucking kill you. And I was like, that's a promise. I was just like, it's not a joke. <laughs> yeah, like I just love that shit because, like, y- y- absolutely, you know. And then, hundred percent behind that. There was a long at the very end when Matt does leave, uh, when Will leaves. There was like a long shot of just um, watching Chucky like go through it, um, being happy, but also it's like bittersweet, you know. Yeah, he was just it was, it was that like was a really real, well it was a realization. Like I like how they brought that together. Um, and also the letter that Will left Robin Williams where he's like, professor calls about the job, tell him, tell him sorry, I had to go see about a girl. I was just <laughs> like, at first I was like, oh, fucking blow me, but I liked it, you know? Um, and then, but it, Robin Williams saying, he stole my line. That's where it like, hey, it, it hey, made up for it. That was improv too. What, what Robin Williams saying, he stole yep, my line? at the end. I felt like that was, honestly. <laughs> it was improv. I felt like that was improv. <laughs> Son I, of a bitch stole my line. Yeah, some of a bitch stole my life. I I like that. I think that's what saved that cheese factor about him when he was like, I gotta go see about a girl. And also, no, yeah, Robin Williams telling the story about how he met his wife and he missed the uh, the, the biggest baseball game ever. I love that scene. That was great. I love that, that, was that really story. Really great. I, yeah. I I can't believe I fucking didn't think to mention that. But well, because there's so many great scenes in here. That Whenever scene they have is sessions. fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh and, oh, and my favorite parts were always those two together. You know what? And the part I almost cried a few parts, but the part that like nearly got me in tears when he's just Rob. Oh, fuck, I'm tearing up saying is when Robin Williams kept just just kept saying it's not your fault. Okay, that's what I was gonna say. We need to talk about that last session. Yeah, we that, have to do it quickly now. But uh, that that's like the the scene. That's the climax of the movie for me. Yeah, that same here. Like fucking christ i don't know let's just the, the it, way it's such a simple way, scene but like the way like just raw like, motion comes out and it well, builds up to that yeah and uh what really gets me is uh will's reaction where he's like don't fuck with me don't fuck with me yeah and then he just starts and, like the tear sobbing. goes down his face and he like pushes him back and that's like i, think I just got goosebumps now thinking I, I about think it. that was um like the breaking point you finally see in will like that's the only time in the movie you see him cry and they hug like that's such a fucking good scene and it, yeah. it could have been so cliche and just like oh like ugh. but they fucking nailed it yeah they didn't there wasn't any music to like hype it up or anything it was just them it was just the, their moment and okay i'm gonna quickly run over my points then we're gonna have like five minutes then, to talk about uh, our just, year. Just, just the last time they ever saw and i like keep in touch and it was like oh let's just break the uh the pa- the doctor patient because it was just like only if you grab my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what did I Also, write? I really liked how Robin Williams just kept cussing like it was fine. Like, he was just leveling with uh, Will mm-hmm. personally. So what I wrote down is... Um, let's see. Oh, okay. You remember the uh, part where Robin Williams was, uh, was like... Um, in one of their meetings, he brought up... The, what he missed most about his wife is she would fart in her oh, yeah, sleep. She would fart, yeah. That whole fucking thing was, was improv. improv. Oh my god, damn. And they, like they started laughing in that scene, like, and it was real fucking laughter. Like really? Robin Williams was just being hilarious. Yeah. Damn. And uh, there's also a laugh in that scene, like one of them like squeaks. <laughs> oh, really? Did you catch that? One no, of those, I didn't. Like, <laughs> like it was. Fucking... Oh, I didn't know that was Matt Damon. Was just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was like um, he just wheezed. I thought that was cool that that was improv because I totally thought that was written in there. Oh, yeah, no, same. Like, and like, just when he was talking about, like, it's the little idiosyncrasies. 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 I, yeah, idiosyncrasies that, um, that you remember. I was just like, that, that was like, yeah, of course. 
you know mm-hmm. i don't know like there's just any sessions that they have is a great scene the bench scene so up there also um the scene with um um chucky where he's saying like i'll fucking kill you uh, um it, it's not your fault yeah just, so any scene that i see about a girl like really any scene that robin williams is in i just love uh you know him and uh casey affleck both improved a lot and got a lot of good shit out of and it. and then the fucking uh, man just the shot of the car going on that um that California freeway and the the end song is playing. Uh, I think that was New York. I thought that was uh California. Or not 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 New York. That wouldn't make sense. Um, it didn't look like California to me. It could have been. I I I'll tell you, this looks familiar. This looks it like looked it like could... he was leaving Boston, having driven around those parts a lot. Yeah, like, no, it looked it lo- like I, New York. I thought that's what it looked like until the end, where where I saw him like make a turn. I was like, I feel like I've been here like making making a drive it really reminded me of driving through, through, through new york it reminded me of that but it also reminded me of driving through california so, so i, I don't know boston or something i don't I mean, know either but one of us really. anyway i thought it was california just a couple other quick quick just seeing that car make that drive and that elliot smith song was yeah so w- fucking perfect i wanted to ask you about that but i didn't want to quite yet um the uh just a couple other quick things i wrote down these are just like more things i just thought were funny or cool um the the scene where they were at the dog race um yeah Sky- that's where i thought like oh sky was gonna sky better not die skylar and uh will were there apparently a uh, mini driver who played skylar um actually had a had placed a bet on one of those dogs that day and so her reaction when her dog actually won was real <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there's, there's so, so much, much improv. Cool shit there's so in much this improv movie. in this movie. Damn. Um. Okay. And um, it, I also wrote this down. Um. In the one of the one of the last sessions, where um Robin Williams like kicks uh Will out. Oh yeah, he's like get the fuck. Oh yeah, when when I forgot he, about that. He, when he was, was like, like what do you want to do? I want to be a shepherd. Shepherd. Fucking. Shepherd. Did you catch the joke there? Because I didn't. Until I was listening to the commentary. No, what joke? When, uh, when, uh, Will was like, fuck you. And then, like, he leaves. He's like, you're a fucking shepherd. No, no, when he leaves, no. uh, he's like, you're the shepherd. Yeah, I heard that. Did you get it? No. You, like, a female sheep? So he's like, fuck you. And then he's like, you're the shepherd. Oh. No, I, I still. Yeah. I didn't get that either. But that, that was just fucking Robin Williams throwing that in there. Like, this dude's improv is great. <laughs> Do you still not get the joke? No, I get it. Okay, good. Okay, good. And I just lo- I just wrote down the quote: "You mathematical dick." Oh yeah, I you mathematical he, dick. <laughs> I love what he called him. That he's like, it's not about you. It's about the boy. You mathematical dick. I loved the way yeah. he said that. Yeah. Okay, and I have to ask you, just you gotta sum it up quick for me. Um, Elliot Smith's music. What yes. did you think? Amazing. Just that that just the fits. end or like because he was basically the soundtrack to Will and Skylar scenes uh, throughout the movie. I, I noticed. I, I didn't notice it at first when they were like laying in bed, and uh, Skylar was talking about like, "Oh, I want to like meet your friends." Until like it fade, the dialogue fades out and the music starts to fade in a bit more. Mm-hmm. I thought about rewatching the scene, but I was like, oh, I'm, "I'm hearing it now, so I think I'm fine." Because I'll still try to listen for the dialogue first. But no, I, I did definitely remember it. But I just think that end scene with El- the Elliot Smith, mu- Smith Smith music is just so goddamn perfect, and that that deserves a, a, a rewatch. Like it was. That's the song Miss Misery. That Miss was Misery, yeah. that was nominated for the Oscar. Unfortunately, it didn't win, but uh, Titanic came out the year, so of course. Yeah, I mean, my heart will go on. Like, honestly, like I might just listen to that song just by itself because of this movie. It's a good song. Um, okay. Um, and then the fucking. But I just, I, I just wish it were ke- it kept playing throughout the credits. Oh Cause yeah, because it played a different stupid song. song played, and that was in my <laughs> head for the rest of the night, and not the Elliot Smith song. Uh, uh, I it's not in my head now. I'm remembering Miss Misery better, which is thank God. But I was just like, I don't know. I went to bed like oh, Ring of Fire, whatever the fuck the music was, some country bullshit. But yeah, anywho, I don't know. Um, we should wrap it up. Yeah, I was going to say, do we have time to... Wait, wait, wait. 
Do we have time to cover the list in this? Should we just do 2019 and the decade next week? Um, we have well, eight minutes. We have seven minutes. Yeah, we don't have time for we that. We don't have time because we're going to want to talk about the things we liked. Yeah. So definitely. we'll just spend less. We'll we'll plan it better next week when we're not. Well, like we'll, we'll, time, we'll, we'll yeah. cover our. Uh, We'll cover our wrecks next week as well, but but we'll we we'll, won't we'll, we'll be hopefully it won't be as cru- uh, crushed for time. Like yeah, we'll have to we'll have about the same amount of time. We'll just have to manage it better. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to do a shorter session on the game shed. Well, I don't know. We did talk a lot about you know this is a movie and um and a game, so I feel like those will be talked a lot about. Maybe with our next wrecks. You won't have much to say because I think we both got. Music. Yeah, I still feel like I wanted to say more about Goodwill Hunting. It's uh, a great movie. I just love this movie. Um, Honestly, I forgot like how much like you you we can just talk about shit because I was like, oh, I don't know, like I I I'm gonna mostly just improv me talking about us. And I was like, you're probably gonna do half yeah. the talking. I'm gonna be doing. I mean, I realized we had like 15 minutes, and I was like, I still want to talk about that end scene. I still want to talk about Elliot Smith's music. Oh yeah, and the, and like you get fuck. It stuck with me too. I was like. You get no prologue. We don't know what happens to them. Like, the rest is, like, headcanon, because, like, we know that Robin Williams goes on a vacation. Um, Professor Buttfeet just stays, <laughs> just eats his apple all day. You know that uh, Skylar still loves Will, and you know that he's going to try and pursue her, so. Yeah, and but we don't know what happens after that directly, but you don't need to know. Like I felt I, like it was perfect. I felt fine. like it was sad. Yeah, I felt like it was perfect the way it ended. Like if we got a reunion or whatever, I was like, it'd be too sappy or whatever. So like I, I'm perfectly fine with the ending, even though like we get no like resolution. technical resolution, but it's enough resolution that these guys are gonna be fine. Like Robin Williams saying like, "Follow your heart, kid, and you'll be all right." Mm-hmm. Fuck. Fuck off was in the beard. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Um like it or hate it, what would you rate it? <laughs> no, it's you. Yeah. Um I I'll I'll just get I'll just get it to I guess. <sighs> I think I'm feeling I'm feeling a solid two. Um Solid two. Sol- solid two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a solid two. <laughs> Fuck out of this movie. Solid two. <laughs> uh, two out of five next. <laughs> no. Um I'm feeling sol what the fuck is the next one? Um, strong. Okay, I was like, "What's the other fucking Fantano thing?" I'm feeling a solid to a strong eight on this one. Okay, maybe maybe solid eight to a light nine, but I think it's a it's a definite eight. Okay, fair enough. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna give it. Just I don't know. It, it'll probably go higher because I do think I, I think this is a great ass movie, honestly, and I think. I think everyone in young adulthood should watch this movie, and you'll get something out of it. And even on um, subsequent watch-throughs, you will or watch-throughs, <laughs> subsequent um, viewings. viewings, you'll get just as much out of it. So I don't know. All right, I thought um, this is like I don't know uh, if we ever fucking do like a top ten movies. This will be up there. That's good. Um. Just we have three minutes now, so I'm just gonna quickly wrap this up. Um, I think, um, you know, I watched it twice this week, um, and I watched the commentary. Like I said, um, I don't think I have any issues with the pacing or with any of the scenes. Um, the acting's great. The story's great. Every performance is great. Um, so yeah, in, in a light of being more just, um, honest and straight up with my ratings, I I have to give it a 10. Yeah. You guessed it. I figured you would. Yeah. You guessed it. This one's a 10 for me. It hits all the notes. I can't think of anything that I'm like, eh, that could have been different. Even when you were saying what you didn't like, I think like, or what, what you thought could have been different. I think it all worked. I mean, I think I'm like once you have the context of the whole movie, watching it again, I'll be like, "Yes, yeah, I get it." And I love all of Elliot Smith's music in it, obviously, and uh, and the other music, all the music complemented it well. I don't, I agree with you that like it shouldn't have switched halfway through um, Miss Misery. That's the one weird. Yeah, the I weird really thing. wish it didn't. I wish it just play. I should just play it on repeat for the whole credits. Um. Okay, and Rex for next week to wrap this shit up. Yeah. Do, do you have yours? Um, 
You know what? I'm gonna probably regret this because I'm. Uh, you know, give me yours first. Okay. Well, you know what mine is. Uh, I know it's music. I'm basically recommending you this film soundtrack next. Oh God damn it! No, not not <laughs> not exactly though. I'm recommending you uh, Elliot Smith's album Either Or, which like five songs from that album. Oh, were, the, were the album the, is called Either Or. Yeah. Okay. Uh, five songs from that album were in this movie. Okay. And um, Miss Misery is not on it though. That that oh, one was bitch. that one was like for the movie quote. <laughs> okay. He actually wrote it before the movie, but well, it, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna listen to Miss Misery as well. That's fine. Um, it's a good song. Okay, just got on um, this um, put it in my list on Spotify so I can quickly get it get to it. So listen through that three times at least and tell me what you think. Yeah, about that's it. what we're gonna do. By the way, really quick um, for albums, for yeah. albums and music, we're gonna listen to it three times at least, and maybe and take we'll some take notes. note of what songs we liked, which ones we didn't like so much. General overall feel of the album and uh, give it a rating. Yeah, yeah, we'll probably talk less on music as opposed to movies or yeah games, especially next week. We've got a lot to cover next. Because what is it gonna be? Like, oh, this song's a bop. Oh yeah, I think this one's good too. Oh, I like this one. Really, I didn't as much. I don't expect you to be the biggest fan of this album, but I want you to hear it. You I want? want me, yeah. I want to know what you think. Yeah, that that's fine. That's pretty much. I want to see gonna... if we can distinguish what you do and don't like about it. So. That's that's pretty much what is gonna be with the music recommendations it's like oh i don't think like you'll like super like it but i want you to hear this you know and hear my take yeah okay and what's yours real um, quick now because it's 11 ah shit fuck um fuck um i'm ba- i'm between two it's music rocks and it's both beatles albums okay which two um i want to i want to recommend you listen to the white album but you're already kind of like doing that and it is a bit out there i barely heard yeah you barely heard any of it you basically haven't but i also want to recommend you sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band because it's like per it's like pretty much universally like their biggest album that has like changed shit for them and like most influential it's not my personal favorite which one do you think i'll like you know, I like more of the ballady kind of stuff as opposed to like the there rocky, is some nice rock Beatles. There is a song I think you would love on Sgt. Pepper. Also, yes, I'm not familiar with a lot of the Beatles music, everyone. Wow. Yeah. I think there is a lot of <laughs> shit that you will... It's a wow factor to I th- that. I think there's a, a song that you would love on Sgt. Pepper, but uh, most of it is kind of like the rock stuff and they do a lot of weird shit. But also the last song, A Day in a Life, is like... I've heard that one. You've heard it, okay. Well, that's yeah. like universal, like the quote, the quote, best Beatles out al- Beatles song of all time. And I'm like, yeah. All right, then, then I guess I'll give, I'll recommend you the White Album. All right, you're, there you're it is. The White Album, half of it's bops, half of them is that rock stuff, half of them is um the ballads, and there's some a good amount of weird shit in there. Um, right. No skipping, at least on your first. <laughs> On your first uh, listen, I'm not gonna skip any of the it's, listens. Well, it's a bit, it's a bit long. Even I will skip. Um, yeah, I know a it's couple an, songs. It's an hour and a half. I looked. Uh, I'll skip. I'll skip a couple songs when I listen to it. But I mean, up to you on your second and third. But there's 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 something in here for everyone. Yeah. If, if you like the Beatles, so like there's weird shit. You got rock shit, and you got a uh, ballad. So all right, cool. And uh, let's. Uh, there we go. Let's blow out this candle All right. now that I'm late. Well, I'm, <laughs> well I t- take a sip of juice. All right, I'm going to blow it out. All right. 